The following is a fan-made reading of the Pale Online Serial Novel by J.C. McRae. It describes extra material published after Chapter 5.5 and contains spoilers for that chapter and all those before it. The original text can be found at palewebserial.wordpress.com. If you'd like to donate to the author, please go to patreon.com slash wildbow. Thank you for listening. And a brief note. This material originally appears as a four-page newsletter with stories, pictures, advertisements, and activities. It has been adapted for audio format. 5.5 Spoilers Kenneth Newsletter Good morning. This is the Kenneth Caller, Kenneth Ontario's one and only newsletter. Today is July 1st, 2020, and if you're a subscriber to a print edition, we're on volume 28, number 15. In today's issue, the end of summer brings hijinks, mischief, and headaches for the OPP, and Slippery Nick makes his unexpected return. From editor Terrence Leslie, our top story today, police are looking for three teens. On Tuesday, June 30th, an early phone call went out to the Ontario Provincial Police in Kennet, asking for help in locating three Kennet teens who hadn't returned home at the planned time. The families of the three teenagers have been communicating back and forth since 7 p.m. in the evening of the 29th trying to locate the boys, and when the boys did not return in the morning, they elected to call. Provincial police were initially skeptical, but followed up on the report. By evening, an Amber Alert was out, asking everyone in the region to keep an eye out for Dan Harkins, Jesse Holm Cutler, and Nick Duff, all 17, and to share any relevant information about their whereabouts. The three boys are pictured in our print edition. Dan is round-faced and Caucasian, with a long, dark crew cut that hangs halfway down his rectangular glasses. Jesse is of Middle Eastern descent, with close-cropped hair, pale skin, and a full beard. Nick is Caucasian, with dark hair on the shorter side. This is not a case of teenagers messing around, said OPP Chief Tom Rollins. We investigated, and there do appear to be signs of foul play. The three boys were in regular contact with their parents until early evening, when the replies to all calls and texts stopped at roughly the same time. When we investigated, we found Jesse's car abandoned in a ditch. His phone, with the wallet as part of the phone case, was still plugged into the dash. We do not believe he would have left that behind if he had left voluntarily. Police have shared the last known steps to the boys in hopes of helping the search. In their last communications with their parents, the boys reported they might be a little late as they had witnessed a near miss in a car accident and wanted to stay in case they were needed. Their parents gave them their blessing and in some cases offered to come by, but were told not to bother. The driver of one car left the scene, the other changed a tire and left, and after a short wait they texted to ask their parents if they should go as there wasn't any damage done. Jesse texted his father and uncle to ask about a large catch of meat left in the back of one car, worrying it would soak into the seats or start to smell if left too long. Jesse's father advised him to leave it, while his uncle suggested leaving a note and refrigerating it. The accident occurred at 8.25, and the boys left the scene at 9.30, taking a westbound exit from Kennett towards the gas station owned by Jesse's uncle. They did not arrive with the car found on the side of Ontario 17, a 20-minute drive west of Kennett. Police are interested in finding either of the two cars present at the near accident the boys reported to their parents, and have already pieced together some information from what was provided by their witnesses. One car was described as a forged vulture in silver-brown with Manitoba license plates, while the other was a rusty Chevron Floridian in mint with Ontario plates. The boys were well-liked, with good relationships with their families, and there is no reason to believe they ran away, the OPP says. Authorities are pursuing several approaches, including the assumption that the missing teenagers attempted to take a shortcut through the woods and got lost, but abduction appears to be the leading assumption. Chief Rollins took the time to dispel some common theories circulating social media, including links to the apparent abduction attempts of a seven-year-old girl, an incident where three masked people allegedly entered a secure area of the Kennett General Hospital to swap infants between bassinets, 
and a case of a man knocking at a child's window. The incidents people have mentioned have no apparent links to the disappearance of the three teenagers. In each of those cases, the focus was on young children and newborn babies, not 17-year-olds. The incidents over the past week appear to be a mixture of hysteria, wildly escalating pranks, and mischief among bored teens, and some criminal elements recognizing our tax resources and capitalizing on them. A dozen officers and Ontario Park Rangers have come to the Kennet area to assist in the search and the handling of other incidents and issues. A group of Kennet residents are organizing on social media to work as search parties and to maintain a vigil across the Canada Day celebrations. The Harkins and Duffs will be appearing at the vigil to pray for the safe return of their sons, while the home cutlers have expressed a wish to stay close to the phones. They're good boys! Anduff says. This happened because they're good. They stayed as witnesses because they thought it was the right thing to do, and they left town as part of a good deed for a neighbor. I believe that the goodness is reason enough for God to bring them home safely. David Duff addressed one of the potential witnesses. If you drove that chevron, please call the tip line. Anne is right. They wanted to help you. Please return that favor. Each Kennet Collar newsletter has the tip line and coordination information on a card stapled to one corner. Our print edition costs 75 cents. The Kennet Collar is sponsored by Tailoring and Patterns by Joy. Call 188-1121. That's Tailoring and Patterns by Joy, 188-1121. Also on the front page, we have a lighter story from contributor Andrew Margo called Maple Leaves Forever. And if you pick up a print edition, you can see the lovely picture of a Canadian flag hand-painted by KCP, age 6, that runs with our story. Our print edition is 75 cents. Just saying. Canada Day celebrations unfold today as Kent prepares to celebrate Canada's birthday with food, festivity, and fun. The Boulder and Greensley Hills each have fairgrounds open, featuring activities, face painting, and events, including the return of the Boulder Cheese Wheel Race, which is for adults only, and the Greensley Airstrip, where locals slide down the ski hill, prepare with plastic sheeting, soap, water, and a ramp. The Farmer's Market downtown will be open this Wednesday with special offers, booths, and baked goods for sale, including Kilolo Doe's One Free Child's Dough to anyone who will wear the stamp on their faces. Kennett's restaurants and businesses are showing off their best experiments and treats, and local creatives will have work for sale at the west end of the market. In the evening, Swanson and Kennett compete at Riverbend in canoe jousting, food and drinking contests, and mud wrestling. Show your town pride by showing up in your red and white or team jerseys, and cheer for Kennett. The Kennett Collar is sponsored by Power Divorce Attorneys. Empower yourself by calling 132 5219. From Ray Pugh State, our next story is celebrations well out of hand. Summer in Kennet marks an occasion to party and cut loose as teenagers wrap up their school year, but the end of June and early July were marked with record numbers of police calls and reported crimes, including fires, theft, trespassing, and both petty and significant vandalism. The calls are a test for the Ontario Provincial Police, who replaced Kennett's own police force in December 2018. The changeover to the province's police force was hotly debated and fraught with local controversy, including a refusal by the OPP to publish response times and what some have termed a betrayal in the province's promise to hire Kennett's entire police force. As call volumes rose and officers were dispatched, residents took to social media to report that hours were passing without any follow-up from police. There were talks about expectations of the OPP and concerns about the nature of their involvement and Kenneth's culture before the change was made. And the summer of 2019 passed, with some leniency given to what is typically a night of light drinking and partying among the graduating class. This year, the parties extended over several days and reportedly grew in intensity and scale. 
More emergency calls were made in the final day of June than were made in January, February, and March of this year. Things got well out of hand this week, says OPP chief Tom Rowlands, and we may have to revise how we approach things in the future to stop students before they can escalate out of control. This out-of-control behavior included three individuals breaking into the home of an undisclosed Kennett resident, sleeping in a back room of his basement, and pushing him over when he disturbed them awake, hospitalizing him. Just a block away, a blasphemous message was painted on a driveway in what is assumed to be pig's blood. Hot garbage was strewn across one street, and an explosive, possibly an illegal, firework was detonated in that same downtown area interrupting a stage performance by a talented, impromptu busker. A parent reported that an unknown person was knocking on their child's window, trying to beckon them outside. And elsewhere, a young girl was taken for a walk down the shore without her mother being told. She was later returned to her by a bystander. Other emergency calls were not the fault of teenagers, including animal attacks on pets, several reports of injured persons who could not be found or followed up on, and false reports of home invaders. Even if the mischief is mild, it takes us away from the incidents that do require attention. Things were not mild this week. It's frustrating and deeply concerning that we were not able to attend to the disappearance of the three boys because of the behavior of some of the people in Kennet, Chief Tom Rellin says referring to Tuesday's Amber Alert for the three 16-year-old boys who did not return home. He stated four older teenagers were arrested on suspicion of involvement in the night's events. The Kennet Caller is sponsored by Establishment Insurance. The Kennet Caller could be sponsored by you. If you wish to buy ad space in our newsletter, contact us. From contributor Sandy Dobson, our next story is 49 graduates. At the end of June, we saw 49 students join the grad class of 2020. Grade 12 students walked the stage at Kennet Public and St. Victor's before joining into a single group for photographs at the shore. There was $52,500 handed out in scholarships and prizes to graduating students. The Larky Hyde Award for $7,500 was given to Tam Miller, and the KA Arena's Student Athlete Award was granted to John Oakham for his excellence in hockey in an undisclosed amount. This will sadly be the last year the KA Arena's award will be given out. Principal Sav handed out the awards to proud graduating students at Kenneth Public, with Tam Miller giving the valedictorian speech. Congratulations, students. We wish you the best. The Kennet Collar is sponsored by Castor Fishing Supplies. Call From contributor Gene Wish, our next article is Wavy Tree Win. The dancers at the Wavy Tree Dance Studio participated in a dancing competition in Thunder Bay on the 22nd, with dancer Jocelyn McKay earning first place in her solo dance, Cardinal Row. Also in the older age group, Erica Henderson earned third place, and the older group's dance, Take Flight, earned the second place spot. In the middle age group, Haley McKay placed third, and in the young age group, Jalen Thomas placed first, and Karina Maddox earned third. Coach Fiona Miles was more enthused than some students, confiding that this was a stellar showing considering the number of communities who participated. This goes to show the value of dedication and hard work. We'll do even better next year, she said. The Kenneth Collar is sponsored by Wavy Tree Dance, Gymnastics, and Cheerleading. Call 557-5545. And now we have an opinion piece by an unnamed contributor. It's titled, Difficult Care. There is no secret that we face a significant brain drain in rural Canada. Every election cycle it comes up in the news, and it is soon forgotten. I've worked in healthcare since I was 20, and I've watched budgets getting cut, doctors and RNs leaving for greener pastures, 
and I see the people who stay getting stretched thinner and thinner. This entire time, I've wondered what the breaking point might look like. I worry that as of this spring, we're seeing that breaking point manifest. Rates of patient violence have skyrocketed, and it is hard to know why. When I talk with co-workers in the field, they agree that something is wrong, but the more anyone asserts that they have a firm answer, the less certain I am that they are right. I've heard explanations that range from the ongoing culture war, to the change in social media, or even, privately, the most kind-hearted nurses wondering aloud if their exhaustion with the current state of affairs is changing them for the worse, with vulnerable patients recognizing that change and preemptively reacting to it. I don't think that's true, but I do think we need help. At Kenick General, we're seeing RNs and doctors get sidelined by injuries, as if they were athletes in a contact sport. We reach out for more, and too few of the bright and talented are willing to come out to a small town of 5,000 people. I don't have a single colleague who hasn't voiced thoughts of quitting or changing to another position or city. Half of those who stay seem to do so because they care about their community, and they know nobody is coming out to replace them. It was always my belief that the breaking point would be an event, something tangible. Instead, it feels like a creeping sentiment, a mass hysteria creeping over a body of patients that pushes people to their edges, and a frustration in healthcare workers that can manifest an ugly behavior I privately reported, knowing that little will be done. We simply can't afford to lose even the bad ones. It is with a whimper, not a bang, that this collapses. In my department, there are five women of retirement age. When one quits or gets hurt, four more will leave, and the department will be empty. What then? The possibility scares me. The Kenneth Collar is sponsored by Bee Scouts, leadership and community for your grade schoolers and preschoolers. Located at 115th Street and Taylor Drive. From contributor William H. Hope, our final article is Slippery Nick's Surprise Return. A group of boat owners in Kennett got a surprise call on Tuesday the 30th, when wildlife authorities made a plea for help in rounding up a recurring scoundrel across eastern Canada. Named by an internet contest, with one letter changed, Slippery Nick first made his appearance on the eastern seaboard, but has since migrated to the Great Lakes and Rivers prompting surprise calls from boaters and people by the lakeside who did not expect to see a bottlenose dolphin so far inland. Yes, Slippery Nick has joined us once again, this time making efforts to enter the mouth of the Kennet River before getting stranded. Boaters did what they could to round him up and secure him for the custody of the Ontario Wildlife Authority, but he escaped them and returned to Lake Superior, where he soon slipped out of sight, true to his name. Slippery Nick has been around for at least nine years, on and off. To answer common questions, dolphins are capable of living in freshwater, and the trouble is not his acclimatization to freshwater, but his ability to hunt for food. He has found a way to manage and actively explores the waterways, startling Canadians and putting smiles on their faces. Some have theorized Nick to be a trained and illegally kept dolphin kept somewhere in land. This would explain his tricks, as he brings random objects to swimmers and beachgoers, gives rides, and does tricks, in between his persistent explorations. Much of the time, he waits expectantly after each performance. Does he expect fish? Some reports say no. He drops the offered meals, waiting, but will claim them before departing. Be well, Slippery Nick. You have no idea how many people are up here on dry land, rooting for you. The Kenneth Caller is sponsored by Connections, small town dating for $6.99 a week. All ages, easy interface, blind date feature, any phone. And now for some lighter things. We have an unscramble puzzle for you, along with a cipher. For a Sudoku, you'll have to pick up our print edition. For the unscramble, get out a piece of paper and write down these words and clues. They're part of short phrases. We'll have your answers at the end of the broadcast. Your first clue is blank dectra. Its scrambled word is S-A-R-I-N-O. Your next clue is potato blank. Its scrambled word is E-L-P-E-R-S-E. 
Your next clue is blank boom. Its scramble word is C I N O S. Your next clue is nose blank. Its scrambled word is L N B I G O. Your next clue is rich old blank. Its scrambled word is N B E G O Y M A. Your final clue is corrupt and blank. Its scrambled word is A E D E S B D. Next, we have a cipher. You get five lines, four words a line, and six letters to a word. You get one hint. It's a quote. Get out your pen and paper because here we go. P P P P H I S T K X A X S D Q N B E T W H H P C V C X S S D W I P E T H W I V C D G W L U D Z U X G P A R P A P H T X F A P X I P V C X W I X T C T W L G S D I R T E R H X A T R Q H I X W B Z I H B T T A J D G W I Y L X T B D B N S P T G W And that's it for July 1st, 2020 in the Kennet Collar. Your answers for the unscramble were Raison, Peelers, Sonic, Goblin, Moneybag, and Debased. With that, have a magical day. This has been a fan-made reading of extra material from the web serial Pale by J.C. McRae, read by Justin Sanek. The original text can be found at palewebserial.wordpress.com. If you'd like to buy ad space in the Kenneth Collar or donate to the author, please go to patreon.com slash wildbow.